day two. It's got to be good. Uh, everyone's a little tired. But that's all right. It only gets better. So we're going to talk about some of the new stuff. First new thing, of course, are the 12 new colors of Distress Oxide. If you're not familiar with Distress Oxide, this was an ink that was released last year from Ranger. We are in our third release. There are now 36 of the 60 colors Favorite. of Oxide. People are just loving it. Um, just because it has such a crazy, unique property. I'll just give you kind of a quick a demo on what makes Distress Oxide different compared to just a regular ink, all right? Now, in the ink world, it pretty much is defined as dye and pigment, right? Those are pretty much the two main types of inks. A dye ink is going to be translucent, meaning we're gonna be able to see through it. So when you use these on light color papers, they really show up well. They do some beautiful backgrounds. If you start getting your paper a little dark, that's gonna to start to impact a dye ink. Now, you may not notice it in some colors, but other colors, you really will. Like your orange, because it's craft, not a big deal. You start getting into blues, and we get blues onto craft, they start to get a little muddy, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what we're used to with dye ink. With oxide, though, this is a fusion of dye and pigment, which means we're gonna have some translucency and some opacity to work with. So our oxide on light has that great color, but also on craft is going to have oh, that great color. Oh, right, right? I never because tried it. have dye and pigment. So you can use it on black cardstock, colored cardstock. So we'll talk about what makes it oxide. So besides the fact that it just has the fact that it's going to have, you know, this opacity. What makes it an oxide? Well, it makes it an oxide because when it gets wet, this ink will actually oxidize. It will actually create this really crazy kind of white haze or hue over the top of it. And that is the actual properties of this product oxidizing. It's not a chalk. It's not something that rubs off. It's literally an oxidation. And every time you add more water, it will continue to oxidize. So. On this, if I spray my Distress ink, we're going to get it to react. That's what it does. If I spray the oxide, it's also going to react, but as it dries, that's when it's going to start to oxidize. And you can let it air dry, or we can go in with the heat tool, and we can immediately speed up the process. And every time we add water to this, it will continue to do its thing. This will continue to oxidize more. This will continue to react more. And you can see on that craft paper, especially how it starts to get that kind of white, kind of milky hue to it. And I'll show you a cool technique with oxides a little bit later. We'll get into some of the, the other new things. With ink, of course, and we have new colors, we also have some cool new tools, some new toys to play with our inks. First one, of course, is Distress Resist Spray. Oh, now, this is a spray that kind of has a consistency of milk. It's very fluid, very liquid, but it actually maintains its texture on a surface. This can be applied to any surface, and it'll be permanent. So I can put this on glass, on metal, on paper, on wood, on fabric, on chipboard, and it doesn't actually soak into the surface. It sits over the top. And what it does, it creates some incredible resist effects. And I'll demo it, but I'll just show you some of the samples that we've done with it. Because it's got such a great spray property that I can use it right out of the bottle. I can use it through stencils. And it creates, and you can see it's got a little bit of a shine to it. So it looks as if you have embossed it with embossing powder. But the texture on it is very, very faint. When it gives that a feel, it's almost like an orange feel. Will it do the same on the metal, for example? It will, will it, do the yes? same on metal. It like a resist, if you look at acrylic paint on top, Absolutely. it will resist it? Absolutely. Oh my God, I want that. Yes. It's very, very cool. And I love the fact that we can create all of these cool patterns. And we can use it really with anything that's water-based. So this one is done with oxide, right? So done through a stencil and oxidized. Now, in addition to it being this resist spray, meaning when I spray it, it's gonna sit on the surface, allow me to dry, and I can go over with my ink, my watercolor, my fluid acrylics, anything like that. Because it sits on the surface, it also has a very unique adhesive property to adhere my embossing powders. Now, in our world of mixed media, embossing powders are very cool, very mm -hmm. popular, and very addicting to a lot of users. But unlike using a Versamark or an embossing ink for it, we actually still get that spray pattern, but our embossing powder adheres to it and allows us to emboss with a spray. So this effect you could never get with embossing powder before. Brilliant. You can get it to be splattery, and I can get little Ooh. drips, I can get big spray patterns, I can go through stencils. I mean, sky's the limit when it comes to working with this. And so I'll show you how easy it is to work with. So the first thing to know with this is the fact that when it sticks to some, whatever it's sprayed on, it's permanent, okay? which means even our non-stick craft sheet, it will be permanent. You uh, have to scrape it off with the razor blade. So when I work with Resist Spray, I work in a box. 
Oh. As much as we say, think outside the box, there's huh. a spray, <laughs> get in the box, okay? <laughs> We want something with a few little walls because as you can see, the tiniest little drop of that resist spray is still going to stick on something. It's still going to add texture. And if you just spray in your space, even on a sheet of paper, mm -hmm. over time, you're gonna have this weird, it won't be sticky, it will just be this bumpy texture that you would have to go in and scrape off with a razor blade. We don't wanna do that. No. So that's why I have a cardboard box here. And you can see this piece of paper has just been built up. Now it's nice because it doesn't go over the leg. So it'll never cover you, I promise. It's very like, <laughs> <Very safe. laughs> but it just has a texture. It doesn't but come it doesn't off. Come on off. It just but looks like Vaseline almost. But it's very annoying when it's all over your MacBook. Let me just tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Someone told that you that? That is how I learned. Yes, I learned the hard way. I played with this for three days and had the time of my life. And my computer was, it was like over there where you are. So it was totally out of my way. But little bits, I guess, went over there. And after a few days, I'm like, what is all over my computer? What is this interesting texture? Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, no. You could have painted on top and create yeah, your own comeback book. And then send it to <laughs> Apple and say, look what I did, the designs. <laughs> uh, take my spray, and I'm just going to spray this, right? So I can give it a, a quick mist, I can give it a quick blast, and the only trick with this is once you're finished with it, you're going to take a baby wipe and wipe that off. Oh, you don't have you to do that. It. You don't have to flush it out, but you do have to wipe off the nozzle because once it dries, it's going to form that little film. But it won't dry inside, in the, inside the spout? It will not. Okay. No. So here we've got a texture. Now, this one will probably take, I would say, about a minute or so to dry. It is heat stable, so I can heat dry it really quick if I want. So I'm going to let this dry while I show you how we use embossing powder. Because a lot of people are obviously fascinated with embossing, and this could be embossing glitters, embossing enamels. And I'm just showing you with ink. Keep in mind, if you are a paper crafter or a fabric artist and you love to use pattern paper or anything, we can take a beautiful piece of pattern paper, spray our resist on, and just leave it. We're done, it will be a clear layer that will then preserve that area and allow me to ink or do everything around it, okay? So you don't always have to use all these funky colors, it's just gonna create a resist. But if I'm embossing, I need everything ready to go, okay? That means okay. I'm gonna need my paper to pour my powder on, I'm gonna need whatever I'm going to emboss. If I'm going to use a stencil, let me see where my stencils are. You guys don't see them out here. Oh, thanks. <laughs> you can tell that Mario comes and cleans up for me because I don't have a clue where anything is. I'm going to have my stencil ready, and then what you're going to do when you use a stencil is just have water. It's just regular cold water just sitting over there because this is a water-based medium, so as long as you clean it while it's wet, it will come off. So if I use it on my craft sheet and when I was done, I went right over it with a baby wipe, I could clean it off, but once it dries, we know it is waterproof. Waterproof. Okay. Okay. Because I didn't want it to re-wet when I use ink. Right, so you'll get that you film on. You'll get that film on the stencil if it stays on by accident. And you have a wonderful textured stencil and you will love it every time you use it. Yes. <laughs> yes. But it would still be a stencil, right? The opening it would still, probably work. The opening it will boil because it's a smooth it's just surface, isn't it? It's a little texture. Okay. So I've got everything at the ready. I think I'm going to go in. I think I'll do, I think I'll do these flowers. That'd be really pretty. All right? So powder, this, this, ready to go. So all I need to do, take my paper, take my stencil, Lay it down in the box. You guys see that? He's got it. He's got long arms. It's awesome. Yeah. All right. I'm going to go in. I'm just going to spray through that. Set this down. Pick up my stencil. That goes right in the water. Pick this up. How far do you spray from so, to make sure oh, that it, it doesn't really matter? No? Whatever so it doesn't go underneath. Doing, no, you don't have to worry about it because what's cool about this is we are going to get that spray pattern. Okay. Okay. That to me is what's so fascinating about doing embossing powder and the resist spray. Because if we've ever put an embossing medium through a stencil, again, a Versamark, an embossing dabber or something, it's going to fill up that area solid. And what's cool about this is exactly how you sprayed it, that is the texture. That distress. Now, another thing we know about embossing powder is that when we heat embossing powder, because it is plastic, normally the longer we heat it, what happens? It melts smooth, right? Mm -hmm. Not when you put it over resist spray. It doesn't matter how many times you spray it. And it was like yesterday, it seemed like it was Iron Chef around here because everyone was like, okay, spray it again. Okay, spray it again. Okay, spray it again. Uh... So this time I just took the resist spray and just sprayed it in the same area, probably seven times. Thinking, okay, I'm gonna get a nice smooth puddle. I picked it up, I covered it in embossing powder and you can see that every little nugget of texture 
That's brilliant. So oh. that's very cool for someone that wants to do a lot of texture. Maybe you want to do a, a textured background or something like that. So this one I'm just going to emboss. Normally I would prefer to use an embossing gun for this over a craft tool. Uh, Ranger's craft tool is great, but it's great for crafting. An embossing gun that focuses heat way quicker when it comes to embossing, but it'll do the trick. Like the hero arts? <laughs> anything that focuses, anything that's a small diameter is really okay. focusing the heat. This is the same temperature as those, yeah. but this one is designed to diffuse the heat so it doesn't burn your paper. So that's why I'm allowed to be like an inch away and my paper's not on well, fire. I didn't realize that because I always yeah. use that one. Yeah, no, so embossing gun is for embossing, but this is for everything else. So like when I dry ink or paint, it's this one. Because if you try to use an embossing gun with ink, your ink is like shooting over there like spin art. Mm -hmm. But if you look at this texture that this flower has, oh, it's like just droplets of metal. And what do you have embossing enamels, embossing glitters, any of those things, we are really relying on the texture of the resist spray. The spray, that whole pattern, we are using that to our advantage. Because that's what creates a really cool kind of mixed media vibe here. Now we've got two things. We've got one that is embossed and we can see that kind of beautiful platinum that's in there if the light hits it. Mm -hmm. And then we have one that we've already sprayed. Now how do you know if this is dry? If you touch it and it's not wet, it's dry. That is so brilliant. Know, but the reason I tell you that is because if you look at it, it looks wet. Right? Okay. When you pick up that paper and you tip it, it's going to look wet. And if you use a heat tool, it's still going to look wet. So the only way to see if it's dry is... Touch it. you got to go in and be like, is it dry? Well, just touch it. It does not... And you're welcome. It doesn't take long, though. It really doesn't. I would say that this dries within a minute. Do you have trouble getting it off your skin, though? No, I've actually done really well. It seems to come off your skin nicely. Yeah, as long as you have some sort of scrubby, like I just use like a kitchen scrubby, it works perfectly. Um, so now we're going to add some color. Now when we add color, we could use our ink pads. Mm -hmm. We could again use our fluid acrylics. We could use crayons, anything like that. I like to work with a spray stain only because it's quicker, right? It's going to be a great way to add quite a bit of color in a short amount of time. Have you tried to spray it on like yuko paper yes. and use alcohol with it? Yes. Now okay. if you use alcohol or archival, something solvent, right? Something solvent or oil that goes over the top, it will initially cover it. But if you cover it with like an alcohol wipe, and just lightly go over the top, it will reveal the resist layer. But it will stick to the Yupo paper. Yes, it will. Amazing. Glass, I love that. metal, it will stick to everything you don't want it to and more. Yeah, <laughs> but on fabric is very cool because on fabric, unlike most uh, liquid, something like this, you would think that that liquid you just soak right into the fabric. It sits right on the top. Uh, just like you would think on that paper, it would have soaked in, but it sits on the top. That's what makes it very cool. Is so, it washable on fabric? Um, I've hand washed it and it did okay, okay, but I think when you get kind of the friction in it, it'll start to gum up. That's what I noticed. Right, yeah. Yes. Okay. Yep. So here I'm just going to go and we'll do this one a color. I'm just going to take some of my ink sprays and just spray a little color there. I'm always in the habit of wiping the nozzles on things, so doing it for resist spray was completely normal for me. See, I always I'm wipe not. off my ink sprays, everything. I think it's going to spray. If you just get in that habit, then your stuff will never clog. I don't care what art medium you use. You just don't have to worry about that clogging in there. Look at that. All right. Then we're going to add a little bit of water, just a few drips. And whenever I use a spray, because some people don't like it because it looks like, you know, paintball, right? It's got red, pink. If you just pick up your background and just give it a quick little movement, right? You don't have to shake it. You don't have to spin mm -hmm. it around. Just give a little movement. Your colors are just going to kind of organically migrate somewhere. Now, when we first sprayed it, you saw that a lot of that resist was covered up like when i first started spraying it it just looked like a pool of ink but you see as it's starting to dry that resist is coming up those little white dots are mm -hmm. going to start to show and that will keep doing that so because the resist is already dry it is heat stable which means any amount of heat that i add is not going to re-wet this it's not going to make it sticky okay. which means i can add my water i can blend this out I can dry this and as it dries you're going to keep seeing more and more of that resist. Now down here is where I did that first mist so it's very light. Up here is where I kind of created that splattery look That's so we beautiful. can get some bigger areas. And I can dry all of this ink completely but I can also blot it off. Wow. And we have a really, really cool background. A background that we can die cut, a background that you can stamp on. So you can stamp on it with a stays on or archival. Would right? the stays on resist? Will it resist the inks? No. No. Nope, so it goes right over the top of it. Because it's dry. Because it's dry. 
Yep. And now we have a textured. Wish you could feel it. Wish you could feel texture vision, right? Because it has it. that kind of orange peel. Wow, the that's same beautiful. Thing on this one, I can go in just with some colors. I give this one a little bit more of a warm palette. Oh. Got a little purple down here. Oh, that's beautiful. A little bit of water. Love it. A little impractical. I don't know what just happened, and we're gonna dry it. Well, just that little bit of movement is going to take that color and just move it somewhere where you just don't think about it. Now, this is where I love the Ranger Heat tool, right? We saw yes. how long it took to mm -hmm. emboss, which means it's still going to allow me to go in and dry my ink layer and allow me to kind of go and block this up without worrying about remelting that powder because we know that powder takes a while with this heat tool. So mm -hmm. that is why I love it. Look at this packer. Oh my gosh. That's gorgeous. Add a little bit of water to that distress. But imagine doing a journal cover, invitations, anything like this. And even if you didn't already have this inky background, just doing this stencil over some beautiful pattern paper or music paper or something like that, like look at that great pattern. That floral design that has texture, but that whole kind of bumpy look. So it really looks like just kind of some nostalgic vintage metallic. And you can see here, even where the embossing powder didn't take, it still resists because it's a resist spray. So we were even playing around by spraying it and then just kind of randomly sprinkling some powder. So maybe we didn't want a solid concentration mm -hmm. of color. Wow. You really have the ability to use a resist spray. So that is kind of resist spray in a nutshell. Just a little bit of taking that spray, creating a sprayable resist, or doing some embossing. So with that tool, we also uh, used it on different mediums. Distress crayon, it worked really well with. Distress oxide, distress ink spray. But as makers, we want tools. Love tools. We love tools. We love tools. So isn't that awesome? It's so, it's so beautiful. Beautiful. I love it. So we're going to talk about tools. We're going to talk about working with inks in a different way. We're going to talk about the new blending brushes. Why do we do brushes, right? We just got on that whole blending tool. Why brush? Right? <laughs> well, the whole thing about it is that even though I love the blending tool, I do. I love the mini blending tool. I say it's like a sports car for your inking. Um, there are some different things that I might want to do with ink that I still find a challenge with this tool. Now, we'll talk about just blending on its own. Obviously, blending to me is second nature. I can blend no matter what. You can give me any ink in this tool and I'll go for it. I can. I like to blend. There's still people that are blend challenged. They don't like to blend. They're afraid <laughs> of the, the blending tool. That's fine. This, just that circular motion, creates a beautiful blend. But what if I want to use inks with a stencil? Right? I love working with inks in a stencil. Now I would have to take this, let's say I wanted to ink this flower. I would have to go in with the tool and go straight in there. That's right, dabbing. And usually what happens is if I dab this tool, I it's going to leave a mark. It's yeah. not going to be this soft. And you think, okay, well, you can kind of go over it light. Well, if I go over it light and twist it, this foam is going to get caught on all yes. of these little oh, pieces. It's so annoying. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I've done that. Exactly. Yeah. So then I thought, okay, I see everyone using stencil brushes. Okay, maybe I need to go with a stencil brush. But I thought, well, wait a minute. What can I do different that's not already done? Because let's face it, there's a million and one stencil brushes out there, all sorts of inking. And I thought, well, how would I use it? What would I want in a brush? Because I know already I don't want seven different sizes of brushes. I don't want this brush for this kind of ink and this brush for that. So after taking a trip to Sephora with a friend of mine and looking at the wall of makeup brushes and saying, those are a lot of choices. One of the uh, features caught my eye wasn't this exact one, but the idea just really sparked kind of what I can think of for a brush. So the blending brushes are sold in a two pack. Mine have this color ring. I simply masked off both sides with washi tape and took some acrylic paint just so I can identify it because these brushes, you only need seven. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, right. and brown. Because unlike a blending tool, all I need to do on the brush is wipe it on a baby wipe and I can go from my inks to my oxides, okay? Just by wiping it off. So I don't need all these different brushes. Now these conveniently fit in a Distress Mini tin. So seven of them, they are sized that they could fit in this tin. And how it works really, pretty simple. So if I go in with red and maybe I'll take a little picked raspberry and maybe I'll also take some candied apple, right? We'll take a couple of different colors of this ink. Now, the blending brush, when you open it, it's a great uh, natural bristle brush. So I can just swipe it right onto 
my distress pad and I'm just going to go in and I'm going to ink and I can go in a circular motion or I can pounce. Does not matter. Does it have the feel of a stipple brush? Um, it's much more flexible than a stipple brush. Okay. Okay. Because it's, it's designed to flare out. Can you do that? Out. I just want to feel it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So it's silly, but it's, it feels differently. It's softer. Yes. Mm -hmm. It is softer. Yeah. Because I wanted, well, you'll see when I just actually blend directly onto paper. I didn't want it to leave any lines. And a stipple brush is so hard. Right. That's why That's what I marks. wanted you to do it on yeah. my hand because a stipple brush hurts when you do it yes, on it. Yes, it's going to leave a mark. Mm -hmm. All right. So here and now I've inked my first layer. Now, when you're finished with the brush, all you do is take this and you're going to slide this all the way up. It's going to cover the bristles. There's these little bumps on here. That's going to catch the lid. And then when you push it down, that's going to retract it and secure it on there. Perfect. But there's a reason to wanting something specific like this because I want to go in and add some colors. Maybe I want to add a little bit of yellow, a little wild honey to this. So I'll take my yellow brush. Now you saw in this detailed stencil that when I have this brush, I don't want to stipple that yellow. Otherwise, all my flowers would be orange. I just want to add a little bit of color. So this brush allows you to slide this neck up oh. to make a stipple brush. So oh. instead of my bristles flaring out now, now it's going to actually so focus smart. where I want color. So I'm just going to load up my brush like normal, slide this up, and put my finger here. So you get to determine wherever you slide this as to how firm or stiff that brush becomes. Now it is like a stipple brush. Right. Now if I that's went into hard. your finger, it's going to feel hard because all my bristles are compact into that center. But that's going to allow me to go here and actually focus my color just where I want it to be. And it doesn't get underneath the, the stencil? No. Like, okay. Nope, because it's cool. just that brush. That's great. So now I can create this really, really soft blend with that. And of course, when I'm done, just slide that all the way up, cap that, close that up, and I can go in with some green. Mm -hmm. I'll just take a little bit of green, which is fine, but it doesn't always have to be stencils. That's the whole thing that I want to share with you. It doesn't always have to be a stenciling brush. That's why I didn't call them distress stencil brushes, because there's more than just uh, putting them through a stencil. But a lot of people love working with stencils. In fact, I use this not only with ink, but you can use it with distressed crayon. You can scribble your crayon on your craft sheet, spray it with a little water, pick it up. Mm. Um, so that tag that's hanging on that board with those roses, you see how dark and saturated those are? So that tag was done with grit paste or a texture paste, let it dry, then put the stencil back over it so it's like a mask, and I went in and colored it with the brushes and some crayon. Wow. So it's a really cool way that we can go in and So they can get wet? Color. They can be like a Absolutely. bit wet, yeah? Absolutely, it's a natural brush. Okay. But I like the fact that I don't have to worry about, oh, I need to mm -hmm. go from the edge and do this. I say, <laughs> whatever, however you want to ink. But I'll just show you how nice and soft and blended that is, right? Just by adding those layers, adding that little bit of pink, adding that yellow, adding that green. It's and beautiful. your pressure is really allowing you to add your colors in a whole different way. But let's say you're not going to stencil. Let's just say, you know what? I'm not stenciling. My customers aren't stenciling. I don't care. We just want to use ink. Now, in in the creative world, so many people are loving planners, right? The whole planner movement. I want to, I want to create with a planner. But there's people that don't want to put ink in their planner. They're afraid, especially with a blending tool. No matter how many YouTube videos they watch, they still can't just master the blending tool. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> What's nice about this brush is it is designed to blend. That's why it's called a blending brush. So I can take my brush. I can take my ink of choice. I can load it up with my ink. And now I can go in and I can blend right onto my paper. Oh. And it doesn't matter where I start, how I start. I don't have to start off the edge. I don't have to hold my hand any which way. I can just go in and add ink. And I will always, always get a blend, right? Whether I swirl it, whether I pounce it, I will get a blend. Now let's say if you want that cool look like distress, right? Want that darker edge. Well, we have the technology. We know how to take but that same smaller. thing. But it's smaller. Yeah, mm -hmm. and just make that. A little bit more uh, dense so now when i go in i'm able to really intensify that color just on the edge and then if you want you can still go in and blend this out so i think people that are using planners and cards and things like that now they're not going to be afraid of that's using great mm -hmm. yes pretty cool so again another tool that's just going to allow you to ink in a different way not to replace the blending tool i'm still going to use that because if i had to do an entire journal with this brush 
I would need several naps in the process in order to get through there. That's right. So it's really just about having that tool to say, okay, I know the look I want. So I'm going to use my blending brushes. Or, oh, I'm going to blend a card or a background. I'll use a blending tool. So that's what's new in the world of distress. Oxides, resist spray, and blending brushes. Cool, right? Yes. Yes. So we'll talk about just a couple of other things, and that would be uh, with alcohol ink. And I'll just talk about that just to share with you what's new in that world. Alcohol inks have uh, becoming more and more popular, I think, for people that do uh, fluid art, that do a lot of painting. But still, for me, I love doing backgrounds. So we have six new colors of alcohol ink and a new mix it in. So let me go through this. I like them in order. I'm just that way. Sorry. I just, shot, just saw Sharon way. doing Control this amazing chaos. like art. Great? Oh my yeah. god! I Sharon was waiting for you Stano. here. She's so cool. Go to it, it was so unbelievable. Funny. I yeah. learned more in like half an hour than I've and ever learned about like, alcohol. She just doesn't care. She just like lets you play yeah. and yeah, do yes, really she cool was things. amazing. So she paints with alcohol ink. So here are the new colors. First color is crimson. You can see it's a really dark, rich red. Wow. Very beautiful. deep. Totally different than poppy field or cranberry. So we kind of put it exactly where it fits into the line. All the years of alcohol ink, never had a yellow. Hmm. Alcohol ink's been in line over 10 years. We had butterscotch, which I thought was yellow. My favorite. <laughs> then we did sunshine yellow, and we're like, ooh, so bright, it's like sunshine. Yeah. Then we did honeycomb, but now we have dandelion. That's Beautiful. a yellow. That really, yeah, adds a lot of great vibrancy to a background. We have coral. Coral's really nice. The nice thing about alcohol ink, it's not really connected to one single palette. It used to be years ago with the Adirondack line, but now that it's just alcohol ink, Anything goes as far as what color I want. So you can tell that this was probably inspired by another palette. Yeah. This color was definitely oh, inspired yeah. by another palette. That's my favorite, <laughs> yes. Yes, you like pistachio. Okay, I know so, what that looks like. That's how you sneak yes. as a palette. Well, because I said, I'm like, so do I have to stick to any specific palette? They're like, they're just alcohol ink, any color you want. I'm like, okay. Pistachio yeah, it is. Like and then I did that, I'm like, okay, pistachio. And then I'm like, oh, Aquamarine. almost Mermaid Lagoon. Almost, but a little bit deeper because Beautiful. in a turquoise line, we obviously have these light ones, aqua pool. We did turquoise about two years ago. Yes. But from turquoise to stream, it's a giant gap. gap right? You need right. to go from really pale to almost a, a teal. So aquamarine fits right in there. I love that. Of course, we need to have a brown. We had espresso and teak wood. We have sepia. Which oh, is I love it. I, wanna, I want yeah, that. There you go. I it's want that. for vintage photo. Um, <laughs> but great, great color uh, for that sepia. Listen, when we know we have good colors, why reinvent the wheel? Yes. It's a good color. But what I'm really excited about are two new mixatives. We don't really wow. release new mixatives very ordered often. Those. They're very, very difficult for the chemist to do. So we have rose gold and we have gunmetal. I'm excited. Now a mixative is really designed to mix with alcohol inks when you do backgrounds. They're not designed necessarily to be used like this. But I love the color. If you're not getting the reflection, it's pretty awesome to see that pink and that dark gray gunmetal. So, so different that is what I we saw have. It in the other line. Yeah. Yeah, in it's person. So, yeah. so pretty. Yeah, really, really nice. So, in addition to all the new colors, we have a couple new accessories. First up, oh, I want that. storage tin. If you are an alcohol ink user or so if you use distress oxide re inkers, a lot of people doing brush lettering are now collecting their bottles of oxide re inkers. Uh, enamel accents, stickles, they will fit in this tin. This tin holds 30 bottles, okay? It's designed to actually Brilliant. expose enough of the label that you can look in and see, okay, this is yellow, this is green, this is blue. And you can pick out your colors, whatever you want to use. But what's cool about this is that these bottles don't move. They don't go anywhere. Oh, there's a channel nice. in the bottom that nice. keeps all your bottles where you want. So it's not like you take out the bottles and all the other ones fall in, and then when you're done, you're just like... I know, that's what happens in my drawer where I have yeah. them, yeah. and it's so annoying. Yeah, I used to have stuff like in a shoebox, and yes. all line up, and then I take three, and they fall in, and it's like... I know, it's so annoying. Yeah, and it's done. So it was important to... I am one of you. I feel you. Know. <laughs> it looks good when you organize, and then you just can't stay organized. But this allows you to kind of put things right back where they need it's to go. True. I know. And then if you are going to travel with them and you put them somewhere, you don't have to worry about these bottles flipping yeah. over and kind of upside down yeah. and opening up. So that's a nice thing. It does hold 30 of these inks. Then Ranger really kind of, uh, especially because of Sharon doing a lot of painting, we did an art show it's last brilliant. year called NAMTA, which is uh, it's kind of like the creativation, but it's only for fine art. And that's what we met her to demo. And we were trying to explain to the art world that alcohol inks can be used for painting. So they were asking about certain tools and we're like, oh, well, you can use this distress ink palette with the alcohol inks and you can use this and we're like, so I can paint with distress ink? And we're like, 
yes, but not on Yupo or doing alcohol ink, but you can use this palette. And it was not really good. And with her guidance, she said, you kind of need to just put it in the program. Like it's almost like giving the customer permission to say, okay, if I want to paint with alcohol ink, I need an alcohol ink palette. So this is the same palette that's in distress, but it's also branded alcohol ink. So if you are creating an alcohol ink program or if your customers are saying, well, what do I use? They know, alcohol ink. Same thing with paint brushes. She just yeah, she explained. So she explained that the glue basically came off whenever they were washing them. Yes. So yes. So was, we needed a brush that would actually be resistant to solvent. Otherwise, eventually, all the bristles yeah. will fall out of your brush. So that is why we created some very simple tools. And the Mini Mister, uh, you can use isopropyl alcohol. So mm -hmm. even though we don't spray blending solution, you can spray isopropyl alcohol to create some cool backgrounds. So there again, we have the alcohol ink tools. And then. We did the mini because we got so many requests because now that everybody loves the mini they're like will you just do the little felts for alcohol ink and we're like yes but if we're going to do felts we might as well do a tool because if someone's new to alcohol ink never done it before it's nice to know that they can buy this mm -hmm. tool with the felts so that is what's new it's the same tool it's just exactly the same handle it's just felt or you can just buy felts i cannot just buy the felts so and just put it on the handle and we also sell felts That's with the tool, so i love it pretty cool Other thank you stuff. you're welcome Really good. Excited. How are you? Yes, of course. Um, can you tell me about Target? Just say bye. We're going with <laughs> <laughs> bye. Uh, it just depends on what you're wanting.